welcome 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 one do something a little bit different at the beginning hello everyone this is lisa with art of inspiration hello everyone hello dd hello Ange. oh i have to speak to our dear hello Ange. love tarot hello dear hello mr wanda i had to do that breaking news y'all i mean thank you all for coming thank you all for coming I had to do the breaking news because let me tell you, honey, there has been some things going on today and I'm like, the full moon isn't even here yet. Everything is going on. There's just things happening. If you all saw my community post, it's like I had people breaking up, making up all within three hours of each other. People angry about certain stuff. People just misinformation, just telling stories. I was like, what in the world is going on? I said, I got to get on here and talk to you guys tonight about this gosh darn full moon. So hello, Sarah. Hello, Giga. Hello, Miss Victoria. Oh, I have to see how to... Heaven Franklin. Hello. I love that name as well. So you guys, um, I'm not sure exactly how long we're going to be on. We'll talk about this full moon as it's getting ready to come in. Again, if you saw my, my post, we're going to get together tomorrow and we're going to do the readings. You know how I like to do the readings by, by sign. We'll do those as well. Um, and honey, 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 honey. I just, the first thing I have to say to everybody as we're just letting some more people get in the room is remember this is just a transit everybody just can we pump our brakes and breathe uh because the moon is simply transiting now i should have while we're on here i'm actually going to go here and check out the current transits as well because let me tell you something, y'all. I mean, it's been crazy. This week has been absolutely nuts. You would have thought the moon was full for the entire week. Was full for the entire week. Because people have been acting a fool. I don't know if that's happened to any of y'all. But people have literally been acting a plum. Oh, my God. That's why. Hold on, y'all. I have. Wait a minute. I got to get to back to my breaking news. Hold on. Breaking news. Breaking news. Here we go. Breaking news. just tell y'all a little bit about what's going on with the current transit i don't know if i can bring up this chart that quickly i'll bring it up in the other chart i see what's going on around these here parts we got the moon running around here in pisces oh my good lord okay here we go i know y'all are just like lady will you get your stuff together all right here we go you've been focused this week giggle jupiter is direct yes breaking news jupiter is finally direct people so we can finally get those big ideas going and get those big expansions going but i'm gonna tell you something hey sr and i think i said hello to sarah um your ex had a complete breakdown and came full circle you floor i'm gonna tell you something so let me just kind of put this out here a little bit. So the moon is transiting Pisces right now. And it is at 13 degrees Pisces coming up real close, darn near on top of Neptune. So it's going, which is in retrograde. So if people are kind of been, uh, kind of been a little bit delusional. You know, I, I have talked to some people that I'm just like, really, this is what we're doing today. This is what we doing. Um, I'm telling you, oh y'all, I just can't even. So if it feels like people's like they just are don't have a grip on reality, or they've got a really intense grip on reality all of a sudden, and now all of the self sabotage stuff that they've been doing, now they're finally like, ooh, oops, I've been effing up. Yeah, my mouth might be a little loose today. Um. So, child, I don't know. All I know is it's just cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Hey, Trinae. Hey, everybody. 
All right, y'all, let's get into this, okay? So that's the breaking news for the current transit is the moon is running around in Pisces, child. Oh, so I'm going to tell you with that moon running around in Pisces today and Mercury in retrograde in Scorpio, you, there's a lot of truth serum being poured. People's fantasies are coming out but i will say that the reality of the fantasy is kind of being exposed that's how i'm going to interpret this that the reality of the fantasy is being exposed so where they may have been a little doo -doo, you know um now their emotions are kind of coming in line and they're saying, oh my goodness, you know, I've had this, this, this attitude or this thought, or I've looked at something a certain way for so long. And now, um, now I can see it for what it is. Not only that, it's that deep stuff, right? Because you've got Neptune going retrograde in Pisces and you've got mercury going retrograde in scorpio so I, there's a lot of truth serum when we have ex mercury excuse me when we have mercury retrograde in scorpio there's a lot of truth serum that comes out people's underbelly they're deep what they've really been thinking but i ain't said comes out now not everybody's probably going to think of it that way but i sure as heck do hey hello everybody all right Yes, he was delusional. <laughs> Child. All right, let's get into this here. Okay, we are going to do this. We are going to do this. And we're going to do this. Okay. This is the full moon chart. The full moon is going to occur on the 12th of November. 13:34 what time Hold on Sorry guys I believe it's 13:34 That should be Eastern Standard Time Eastern Standard Time okay I don't know what y'all saw there Anyway, 1334 Eastern Standard Time. So 134 is going to be the, the height of the full moon if you're in the East Coast. Um, 1234 if you are on the, sorry about that, what you guys just saw. Uh, uh, one thir 1234 uh, p.m. on Central and um, 1034 a.m. on the West Coast. <laughs> All right, so let's get into this, guys. Let's get into this. Hey, Sassy. Hey, Janelle. All right. Here we go. Once again, if you're not familiar with what the full, what a full moon is in uh, lunar terms, that is when lunar transit terms, that's when we have the moon directly opposing the sun. I'm going to circle Mercury, too direct opposition so what can we expect with the full moon the full moon is when um our how we view a thing how we see a thing when we finally it's fully illuminated um you have full energy because the moon is in full reflection of the solar light right that we can really truly see the secrets right we can the secrets are illuminated you know the moon card and tarot and the tarot um you know it's all about secrets it's all about walking spiritually it's all about that kind of walking by moonlight so what was done in the dark has finally come to the light basically so this is a great time to release this is a great time to manifest this is a great time to um really kind of settle in to settle up right it's it's kind of time to settle the debts to settle up the accounts and say, you know what? Okay, I can finally let this thing go, whatever it is. The full moon, the moon is going to be in Taurus. Um, so Taurus, as we know, is that sign of 
um, self-made money, um, self-made family, um, routine, uh, how, all of that, how that it's an earth sign. It's a, it's a fixed earth sign. So all of those the things that are very foundational, right? So it's highlighting the foundational. What are we to let go of in the foundational? How are we to change, release, manifest? It's going to be a lot about career, family, um, relationships, close relationships who we have with us on the bus ride as we go along, um, who's sitting next to us on the bus, who needs to get kicked off the bus. This is your stop exit. Okay. Now, the sun is in Scorpio. We know what Scorpio is, right? Scorpio being the eighth house, Scorpio being the house of intimacy, Scorpio being the house of contracts, Scorpio being the house of leveraging other people's assets. What can I leverage from you to, to, all, to make uh, good with me, right? Um, how can we work together in that realm? It is also the, the uh, loyalty sign it is the, you know, you riding with me, you are ride or die, or you're going to have to get off, right? Get out of here. I'm not trying to hear you. Not trying to see you move it around. Um, it is all those deep, dark underworld things we don't like to talk about. So that's on display. If, if I was just to take just those two planets, also with Mercury retrograde hanging out right there, darn near conjunct, basically one or two degrees away from the sun here. If I were just to take those three right there, I would be able to tell you just from that, hello, governor, it's time to go deep, really look at yourself. That's why I titled this, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Okay. And a lot of the reason why I'm saying that now you have to understand that right now the moon is right here. So let me see if I can make a nice little crescent here. The moon is basically like chilling out right here. So that's why we're getting to the delusional stuff happening right here. Okay. Um, and it's moving this direction. It's going to be moving through Aries past Uranus in retrograde, and it's going to land here over the next few days. Today is what? The seventh? No, today's the sixth. So between now and six days from now, it's going to finish transiting through Pisces, through Aries, all right? Past Chiron, past our deep hurts, and past Uranus, everything's got to change, and it's going to plant right there. So it's kind of gaining steam. I'm going to talk about this. You know, I don't usually talk about the approach into the landing spot, but it's gaining this steam. So we're going through all this delusional kind of how have we dreamt about a thing? How have we seen a thing? And maybe, maybe the relationships that we've been seeing up until now, maybe actually they need to be changed, right? Or maybe they're not exactly what it seems because you've got the trine of Neptune here and the sun. Um, you know, the sun is approaching. It's kind of at the point of this uh, full moon. It'll be past really kind of the trine, but it's agreeing with it. So you're able to see, right, how people really are deep down inside, what their intentions have been towards you. And they are able now to kind of see where they may have lost it, missed it, been wrong. How it was just kind of a dream. That could be good, that can be bad. I'm not assigning a good or bad to it. I'm just saying it is what it is. When we get through that deep Piscean, spiritual, moody kind of self-sabotage area, and we come past the universe's spot where Chiron is right now in this galaxy, the place of deep intimate wound that we keep getting wounded. So you might in the next day or two, you might actually begin to kind of feel more like, man, you know what? Every darn time this person does this to me, every darn time I do a thing, 
that I think is going to work out because, you know, Aries is like fiery and it's cardinal and it's like, yes, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. You know, let's go for it. And every time I go for it, I get hurt with the in this particular scenario. So be paying attention to the particular scenarios. Right. The particular scenarios where you get hurt the most historically over and over again could be people could be places could be things could be it could be anything but pay attention to the scenarios when this happens over the next few days remember guys the moon the moon it's a 28 day cycle so it never stays in one place very long so your emotions are very quick right they're quick moving. So don't think it's going to last always. So if anybody came to you, like, you know, you said, who is it that said they came to them? Didi, your ex came to you and was just like, baby, I was wrong. Baby, I was really, really wrong. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, take that around with a girl because I don't think that's going to happen again for a little while. Anyway, take it and run, child. Take it and run. Um, so be looking at that. Also, uh, over the next until the 20th of November, I'm going to put this warning out too. From now until the 20th of November, guys, communication is going to be, could be a tad bit contentious. It could be kind of difficult to even put your finger on or be able to verbalize what it is that you feel deep down inside in this in this Scorpio area here, in that deep underbelly of self even, it might be difficult to really verbalize how you're feeling. You all, you might end up having a whole bunch of arguments, guys, and I really saw that today. I was like, the moon ain't even full. And there's a ton of arguments happening. Miscommunication, disinformation, just incorrect perception. So be very careful. Choose your words carefully between always, but especially between now and the 20th. So let's get back to the full moon on the 12th. Okay. So this is really going to be focusing on what changes. Cause remember we still got Uranus is still hanging out in Taurus. It's going to be there till 2026. So just get ready. You know, by the time 2026, you know, five years, five, six years from now, things with us on a very home front level, very personal level are going to look very different than they do now. So just expect that. And I think there's going to be a lot of also personal technology. This is kind of a forecast. This is a freebie. Um, we're going to see a lot of personal technology as well. Um, you know, another big jump in that area. Uh, we're seeing it now with the smart home kind of thing, but, um, so it, there's, there's the upheaval is happening right? So this is to focus on what daily routines, what, you know, this is what I do all the time, every day, all day, twice on Sundays. These are the people I always have around me. These are the people I always, 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 yeah. Um, focus in on that and, and really look at, do they belong? What is their true intention? Okay. Don't look at this as it's extremely negative, although it can feel a little wonky. And I'm going to tell you why it's going to feel pretty aggressive because we still got Mars over here in Libra transiting. That's almost out of Libra. That is the relationship house, the balance house, the collaboration house, the house of harmony. Everybody get along. That is also though the house of law, the house of justice. So don't be shocked if over the next little while here, as, as Mars is making its final push out of Libra, do not be shocked if you start seeing people get some of that karma. If you start seeing some judgment happening, okay? Don't be shocked. Because it's, it's coming. Mars kind of likes to make a big, bad splash right before it leaves. Don't wish karma on people, okay? But I'm just saying, 
Don't be surprised if over the next probably about week or two, you're like, dang, I didn't know that was going to happen, homie. And it did. Or dang, I've been waiting on that to happen to so-and-so. Mm-hmm. It happened. So what else do we have going on here? So like I said, we talked about this Neptunian trine in with the sun and Mercury in retrograde and Neptune in Pisces in retrograde. Um, Pisceans, don't be surprised if Pisceans kind of do their little deep dive right about now. Don't be surprised if they're kind of doing the Finding Nemo thing. Uh, get your fish finders out because they're going to be down there uh, because they don't necessarily want their underbelly shown. Okay. They don't want their underbelly shown. If you notice, most of the action during this full moon is happening in the outer zodiac signs with a lot of outer planets. Uh, Uranus is the only uh, outer planet that's in a personal sign. By that, I mean, guys, so right, remember that Aries through Virgo are the personal signs, evolutionary wise. Libra is the first sign where we're relating to other people. We've come out of our ego state. We're relating to other people and how other people relate to us. There's a lot of action going on outside of us. What does that tell me as we're looking at this moon? That tells me that we're finally able to see clearly on a personal level how all this external stuff is hitting us. And who externally really needs to be around us and we need to take with us and where we need to be placed externally. What is our position externally? Uranus right here uh, in retrograde in Taurus with this moon, while they're not conjunct, right there, it's transiting in the same sign. It's, it's really revolutionizing how we see ourselves where we see ourselves. Don't be surprised if uh, during this time period up until from now, I would say almost to the end of the year, but definitely during this time period, if you finally kind of get this aha moment of, wait, this is kind of the career path I need to be taking, or wait, this might be the, the, the new, the next level in the job, or this might be something that I can start new a uh, business because Scorpio is the house of contracts as well. Now, there might be a slight delay because or a slight hiccup because we've got Mercury in retrograde, but that doesn't mean we can't get the initial idea, okay? That doesn't mean we can't get this into focus and then move forward, okay? What else do we have going on here? Now, these planets are not necessarily aspecting anything major, but I do want to discuss them. So we do have Jupiter direct, yay, in Sagittarius. This is, uh, although again, it's one, two, three, four, five. It's quincuxing. It's not really doing much as far as with the moon, semi-sextiling the sun. Um, but again, feeling very expansive. It's, it's, it's being very benevolent also with Venus in Sag. So this here, I need, this is benevolent. So we're going to make it green. This right here happening, this transit right here. Uh, I feel like you're going to be, we're going to also feel very calm. Um, we're going to see the beauty. We're going to see the necessity. We're going to see how expanding in these areas is really going to be beneficial to us and be excited about it. Be able to be, and, and, and even if you're not excited, just be comfy with it. Be like, you know what? This might be a little bit like outside of my comfort zone, you know, with this whole Uranus thing happening down here, right? It might be a little bit of outside of my comfort zone. However, my goodness, does it feel good? My goodness, can I see in the future how this would be beneficial to me, how it's liberating for me, how it um, can agree with my life path. 
and how this can help me really move forward on a personal level and then interpersonal level with others. Uh, so I would also say, um, you know, again, return of the X right here. If I'm, I'm going to talk about love for a second, we got return of the X, revenge of the X, return of the X with the uh, Mercury in retrograde in Scorpio. Uh, it might be easier for y'all to get along here, but also be very careful with this Neptunian energy in Pisces that you don't also think, well, maybe we could get back together and it'd be different this time. Uh -uh. I mean, it might be, I don't want to dog nobody's ex out, but I'm just saying, like, you might be willing to kind of give in and be like, you know, we had a great time, right? You had Jupiter and Sag. Jupiter, you know, Sagittarius is known for a good time, right? You know, they party. We can have a great time and a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. And Venus is like, oh, and it all felt so good. And it was just so awesome. Child, look. Okay. Like those were some great, awesome memories. Um, but don't fall for the okie doke. Okay. You heard it here. Lisa told you right here, do not fall for the okie doke. Okay, again, look at it with the discerning son of Scorpio. Discern it and get your discernment on with the moon. Okay. Um, the other thing that's happening that's a little interesting to me is we do have Pluto and Saturn sextiling or in agreement kind of that cousin agreement that supportive role with the moon and then um excuse me one two three that's not sextiling trining excuse me we have it trining in full agreement with the moon and then we have it sextiling the sun over here in scorpio what does that mean lise that means the transformative energy of Pluto and the foundational structural energy of Saturn. Although those two energies don't necessarily get along the best and they're pretty well conjunct, it's going to basically say, listen, you can transform how you're feeling. You need to change foundationally. We get it. We're okay with it. And it's going to temper the need to fully break bad that Uranus gives you. Uranus gives you that energy of, you know what? I can't stand you. I'm going to pack my stuff I'm out, right? We're not trying to hear nothing else. We out. We want freedom. Freedom, right? We got to have it. Um, right. We got to have it, right? We got to have the freedom. We got to break bad. I mean, even me personally, I've been like dealing with this. Do I want to like literally pack up everything and take a position with my company in Seattle, Washington? Like literally that's how much freedom I've been wanting lately. I mean, literally just change everything. So, you know, I'm with y'all. I feel it too. But that Pluto and Saturn up there in Capricorn um, as the moon comes into Taurus and would be trining it is tempering my emotions. It's saying, all right, good. Look, girlfriend, I get it. You want to move on. You want some, some transformation, some freedom, some newness, but how can we structure this? So we just don't blow everything up. Right? Because, you know, if you just go along with those Uranus transits, you'll be done blow it up all your entire life. Okay, your whole everything is just poof gone. So um, this is really saying, hey, you know, calm it down, poo poo. It's all right. Let's let's work it slow, slow, slow. Um, but still transform in a way that personally feels freeing and liberating, and we can still accomplish the same thing. Um, so that's, you know, so if I'm going to put this all in summation, right? Um, the full moon, at this full moon on the 12th, um, as we're leading up to it, let's uh, really analyze people 
Let's analyze relationships. Let's analyze our our um, career, our path, our life purpose. Are we really living out our life purpose? And I know we want to, right? We're feeling this pull up, but who do we and what do we need to let go of here, release, so that we can really fully begin to manifest um, the fullness of purpose? Um, who do we need to release? I keep going back to people because we're in this external mode, right? Who do we need to release in order to get that freedom of movement in order to get that freedom to be who we're meant to be, right? Who is it? What is it? Um, and allow the expansion to happen. Be okay with the fact that, you know what, things might be different and I'm just stepping out. Allow that dream, that daydream, right? That daydreaming is this trining the sun. It's okay to allow that to happen. Now, I'm not saying go full on, just go with it fully. But those personal dreams that you've had, it's time to really let them go, let them be released. All right. Um, so allow yourself to have that conversation, um, your higher self with creator, with the universe, with God to say, hey, here I am. Right. Here I am, I'm ready to step forward. Show me the way. What do I need to move around in my own personal life? What do I, what, what, what patterns do I need to dis disrupt so that I can achieve it? Woo, honey, that was a lot. But don't go so far, y'all, that you uh, can't come back. Okay, be very careful about that. Be very careful. I want to answer a couple of the questions.